saying do Be found by my faith in you I lift up holy hands and sing And let the praises ring Let the praises ring Stand and sing this verse with us Oh Lord my God To you I give my hands And oh Lord my
Good morning. How's everybody feeling? Welcome to what Super Bowl Sunday. Who's going to win? Do you have your menu ready to go tonight? Yeah. All right. So who was here Tuesday night for revival? If you were here Tuesday night, a lot of you weren't. We did this song, Power in the Blood, and it was just kind of that old revival feel. We're like, we got to do it again, and we got to do it with the wave, especially on Sunday morning. It's cold outside. We gotta get our heart rate up. So power, 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 power. You're like, Brent, what is going on? You will figure it out as we go. We're gonna do the wave. Everybody ready? There is power, 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 wonder working power in the blood. Sing it in with me. Blood, of the Lamb. Here we go. The there is power, 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 wonder working power. power. Let's start over here. Let's, Let's go this way. Come on, there is power. There is power, power. power, power, power. In the blood, come on, there of the Lamb. Here we go. There is power, 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 power. Wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. In the precious blood. In the precious blood of the Lamb. In the precious blood. People you didn't come to church with, stand up. Let them know how good it is to be in church on Sunday morning, everybody. All right, good morning, everybody. You guys go ahead and be seated. Welcome. See, now y'all can... Uh, eat guilt-free during your Super Bowl parties because you got your extra cardio in at church this morning. So you're good. You're good the rest of the day. Don't worry about anything you eat. Just seconds, thirds, fourths. Um, guys, we have had a great, great week here in the life of the church during our revival services. And I know this morning's just going to bring that all to a close just with a great message, a challenging message. But also we've seen a lot of decisions for Christ made, a lot of lives being changed this week during revival. Um, we're going to be closing this morning service down. We've had over right around 30 people getting baptized this week, which is incredible. Super excited to see in all ages, from young to old, people making a decision for Christ and then following that with baptism. And that's just something we get really excited about here at Pathways Church. Um, also, we had, uh, over in our Kids 22-6 ministry, we had 17 kids accept Christ this week during their revival as well. Let me tell you, our Kids 22-6 program, those, if you don't have your kids involved, if they're fifth grade and younger, make sure they're a part of that. They have got um, teachers, volunteers over there who really do love those kids, um, but even more importantly, they teach them how much more God loves them as well. And it's just a really good program over there in the landing. Um, so if you want to get your kids checked in, go see one of the ushers, go out to guest services, and we'll make sure you guys can get your kids plugged in over there as well. Um, also, our Kids 226 ministry, they're having a free family event the end of the month, the last Sunday of February. It is the Big Kids Circus. This is our third or fourth year we've done it. Just a great time for the family to come together, enjoy some fun, make some good memories together. It is free, but please sign up and let us know that you're coming. We're going to have food. Um, we've got Rudy from um, Barnum and Bailey Circus that's going to be here, and then they'll go over to the landing and play different carnival games. So it's just going to be a great, great afternoon for the families to get together and and go to the circus. Um, also, uh, today is it. Today is the final day, the last day to order, to pre-order um, your limited edition Robert Tino canvas. Um, if you've been waiting, if you've been on the fence, you're not really sure, make your mind up today because if you call the office tomorrow and say, I want to get one, it's going to be too late and I don't want you to miss out. All the proceeds for that are going to go towards the church property down here. Um, and you would be blown away by how many prints we've sold. It really is incredible. Um, 
just to have that not only help the church property, but also to have that reminder of that first message in the Belief For It series, um, just to believe for that next thing, that greater thing that God has for us. And I've already got my spot picked out at home where I'm going to put mine. So make sure you pre-order that this morning. Um, if the ushers would come forward, one more announcement. Um, membership here at Pathways Church, our Plug Into Pathways class. We've got that scheduled for Saturday, um, February 26th at 4 o'clock. If you um, are wondering what membership looks like here at Pathways Church, if you've been around here at all, you know we do things a little differently. Um, and that includes membership as well. So membership here at Pathways Church looks a little different than what you might be used to. Um, so whether you've been around for a couple weeks, a couple months, if you've never gone to this plug, eight, plug into Pathways class, I encourage you to do that. Um, Pastor Brent has taught every single one of those. He loves to be there. He loves to talk to you about the, the history of the church, but also the vision of the church the direction that we're going and how you can be a part of that. So please make sure you get signed up and let us know um, that you'd like to join us in that as well. So let's pray for the offering and pray, pray for the service this morning. God, I just thank you so much just for this opportunity to be here today to worship. We have had such an amazing week of revival, um, but God, I just pray that revival is not just a day on the calendar. Yes, that's good. Yes, that's important, but we also need to um, recommit and be um, excited about our relationship with you every day. Wake up every day just recommitting our lives to you, God. I just pray that this revival goes beyond just this week in each and one of our lives. God, we give you this service this morning. In your name we pray, amen. This confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God the still inside the storm the promise of the shore I trust the power of your word enough to seek your kingdom first beyond the barren place Beyond the ocean waves When I walk through the waters I won't be overcome When I go through the rivers I will not be drowned My God will make a way So I am not afraid You keep promises you make there isn't one that is delayed so I will not lose heart your eye will lift my arms and start to sing into the night my praise will call the sun to rise declare Won't be over 
miss that video intro. I love that a chance when I got a chance to jump from that one rock to the other and that was <laughs> guys we got a lot of people watching this morning a lot 20 states even on the money watching this morning Debbie in Florida Jackie California Dennis Illinois Kim in South Carolina Kevin and Mona in Georgia Kara Wisconsin Lisa Virginia Linda Alabama Tanya Minnesota just to name a few watching people watching everywhere give it up for everybody watching church this morning amazing Last night, we had 18 states and Washington, D.C. watching. I thought, man, it's good to have, anyway, uh, good to see you guys this morning. I know her as as Granny McCarter. She is in the room today. Where are you, Granny McCarter? Can you stand up? Stand up. You are 98 years old today. That's pretty awesome. You are an inspiration because I'm feeling old this morning at 51, and you're like, Brent, you just, just got started. <laughs> Guys, it's good to be in church this morning. You have your Bibles turned to Hebrews chapter 10. Today is an interesting day. If you are visiting with us, woo, you're in for a good treat today. But this is really for those of you, these are, these are Pathwaysians, those of you that call Pathways home. We closed down a series today called Believe for It. And we really closed down Revival Week. We had an incredible week. I still can't get over, uh, once again, what God did in the life of the church this week, especially with everything that we have gone through. We had 2,200 people come to church last week in person, not counting how many people are watching everywhere. We had 2,200 people come the three special nights of revival. And so this building seats 750 people. Of course, we had kids. So Sunday night, Monday night, and Tuesday night, we had 2,200 people. We packed it out, which was amazing. Now, I will say this. I, I, to, when I preached, it was just under 650. <laughs> when Pastor Phil spoke Monday night, give it up for Pastor Phil, everybody. We saw 47 people accept Jesus Christ Monday night alone this week. That's that's amazing. We had 750. And then when Pastor Dan spoke on Tuesday night, we had 826. So I came in third out of three. All All right, I got it, I got it, I got it. You know, it was so amazing. Uh, uh, Tuesday night, I got a chance to sit right over here where Pastor Matt is with my son. And I don't ever get a chance to sit in church with my son, but I got to listen to my friend Pastor Phil on Monday. Then, of course, my friend Pastor Dan on Tuesday. And Dan is, he's just awesome. I love his heart so much. I love him so much. And so I got a chance to sit there with my boy. And Mason's 18, and he's intently watching, and we're looking this direction on the screen. And you're like, Brent, you're on the front row, but we still all look at the screen. And, and I'm just sitting there, and this is great. He's intent. He's into it. I'm like, this is amazing. And then he leans over and says, Dad, squint your eyes. And I'm like, what? Why? He goes, look on the screen. He looks like a scrawny you. And I thought that was just, <laughs> thought that was a bad, that was bad. I'm like, leaner me, I guess. Speaking of children, my daughter has got me into a new uh, breakfast item, the Chick-fil-A breakfast bowl. 
Who's had the Chick-fil-A breakfast bowls? Any, did you even know that thing existed? I didn't know, but a couple of months ago, I, bring, I get the Chick-fil-A breakfast bowl. It's got either chicken or sausage, cheese, eggs, and hash rounds. I'm old school. What do I call those? Tater tots. Tater tots. So she brings me a Chick-fil-A breakfast bowl. And I love her. She, she always texts me. She says, Dad, would you like to have some breakfast this morning? I'm going to bring you some breakfast. I'm like, that's great. But I know what that means. That's code for she's going to use my credit card to buy her breakfast and get me something too. Parents, who can relate to that, right? We all, yeah, that's so touching. So she brings me this breakfast bowl, and I'm trying to watch what I eat. I know that tater tots, fried potatoes are bad. And I'm trying to watch it. I'm really trying to get sculpted. I'm close. Every week, Rob, it's the same thing. So I kind of push the the tater tots aside, but by the end of it, I eat them all because they're very good. You know, I mean, it just goes together really well. And I preached this before, and I want to start this whole message down to close this series down with this thought. And I just thought about it the other day, just like it hit me like a tater tot. I just thought, I don't want to be a tater. I don't want to be a tater person. I've preached it before, and I love it. I think it's so true, and it really goes to revival. It goes to uh, a very key thought. And you're like, Brent, what are you talking about? You don't want to be a tater person. Turn to your neighbor and say it. I don't want to be a tater person. Some of you are like, I like potatoes. (laughs) No, have you ever noticed that some people always have something to say? They always like to throw out their two cents. We call them Comment taters. <laughs> Some of you've been around. I preached that before, right? I love that. That's important. Some people know how to push the right buttons on you, right? They always like to kind of throw the shots in. We call them agitators. <laughs> Some people say they're going to do something, but they never get around to doing it. We call them hesitators. Some people pretend to be somebody they're not. This morning, I got a text message right away, and then I got an avalanche of text messages. Somebody hacked me on Facebook. I don't know if they didn't hack me. They duplicated me. And I thought, man, why does everybody want to be me? I'm the only one that's ever gotten duplicated here in Facebook, I'm sure, right? I got 100 text messages. Brent, uh, they're asking me to be your friend. Did you defriend me? I'm like, no, I did. I got somebody from our North Carolina campus, and Pastor Michael is preaching in our North Carolina campus this morning, Greensboro. I got some this morning on the way to church. Did you defriend me? What did I do to you? I'm like, what are you talking about? And I hate those type of people. We call them imitators, right? I don't like people <laughs> that pretend to be somebody they're not. But the most irritating tater of all, the person that I do not want to be is a person that never participates. We only call them spectators. So my question to you is this. It's an interesting question. I've done some research on it. I doubt you've done research on it. You can, but I don't think too many people would put this in the popular category of, ooh, I want to really research this. Why has revivals in America died. Christian revivalism is not necessarily meant to be tied with revival meetings of churches, but revival meetings of churches in our country has died. I grew up, most of you grew up in church. How many people grew up in church with revival? Let's see some hands. I grew up in church where revival was commonplace. It was all over the place. My papa, my dad's dad, who was a pastor, but yet he would preach at revivals week after week after week. That's when they had seven-day revivals, 10-day revivals. We had a three-day revival, three extra nights, and then we've had church, like we do church a lot, but I had people walking out of church Tuesday night. Brent, let's do it again. I'm like, we will, tomorrow night, two services. No, let's do it Thursday night and Friday night. I'm like, well, there's the cross up on the hill. Y'all gather around. Scott will bring the guitar. We'll go. You know, people used to do revivals all the time, but you don't see it anymore. And you're like, well, Brent, it's because of COVID. No. Long before COVID, revivals died. So my question to you is, why has revival, that revival meeting, these moments that we come together to awaken our priorities to God's priorities, why have they died? Why has it died? You do not see revival like you used to. It's just not out there. And here's why it died, and it goes to a tater person. Because revival's turned into a moment in time 
and not a movement. It turned into a moment. Spectate. Oh, man. Pastor Phil, he was funny. I did think Pastor Phil was funny. The picture he put, I didn't really thought about it. He put all three of us on the screen on Monday night. I don't know if you were here. And, he, and he, we all kind of looked the same. And I thought, man, I did not really realize that is true, that bald is beautiful. I didn't really. <laughs> but people come to revival and they're like, man, that was so good. Oh, my God, that was good. Ah! Dan, he's so funny. That was great, man. He's so touching. And it turns into a moment where we come to spectate, but we forgot it really is intended to be a spark to really rekindle a flame. Revival is not an end. It's a means. And that's why revival has died. We have turned into spectators. And so for us as a church, and literally Dan and Phil both had Pathways moments while they were here, this this should really... uh, just get us all to stand up and cheer and shout. Phil came in on Monday night. Church started at 6. He pulls up at 5 o'clock, and he's like, Brent, there were 14 cars behind me that pulled the same way I was. They were driving the same way I was driving, and he thought to himself, surely they're not all coming to church this early. And then he pulled into the parking lot, and he's like, Brent, you people are crazy here. I've never experienced people getting to church early. Maybe we should work on that a little bit more. You're like, Brent, we can't. There was an early service. I, I sit outside in the parking lot and wait. Dan, the same thing. He was talking in my office at 520. He looks out the window. He's like, Brent, what time's church start? 530? I was like, six. He goes, the parking lot is completely full. He goes, this is insane. What is going on here? I'm like, it's our people. They're weird. What can I say? I mean, that's just who we are. And I love these moments, really, when we put the date on the calendar. And I really felt impressed of God to, at the end of this Believe For It series, to put a few extra moments on the calendar. And you're like, Brent, we do church a lot. But I'm like, we need to give God more. And to think, you know, in COVID and the world that we live in with everything seems to be kind of in chaos. And uh, would, would you come? Would you be here? And we packed the place out, and I even kind of pushed it last week. You could even hear me on Sunday because I felt like a lot of people were coming. I felt a lot of steam, and I'm like, I don't want us to be counted as foolish to where all of a sudden 1,400 of you show up, and the building seat's 750, and it's total chaos, and it just seemed like it worked out perfect. So many people watched online. They were, they were a part of revival from far and, and wide and near. It was just an incredible few days. And I think about this. I don't want it to be a moment I want it to be a movement. I do believe we need to awaken our priorities to God's priorities. And you're like, Brent, what are you saying about us as a church? Do you think there are priorities that really need to be awakened? I thought every time we have church is revival. Yes, I do. I believe that this last two years, what the church should be primarily, primarily doing has been abandoned. And that is evangelism. That is, you and I living a life and talking to people in our world of influence about Jesus. And I believe, especially in the world of masks and politics and polarization that we've talked about, and it's the right thing to talk about because it's real, I believe a lot of people are like, well, Brent, I'm kind of glad I'm Noah and his family and I'm, quote, in the ark. Everybody else can fend for themselves. But wait, the door of the ark is still open today. And so for me, I do. I, I want to go back to rekindling the flame of evangelism. I love that we have five services. I don't know what we're necessarily going to do. Wednesday night, this Wednesday night, we had 821 people show up after we had 826 people on Tuesday night. I thought, well, I wonder if people will come on their normal Wednesday night time. We had 821 in two services. Last night, pushing over 350 in Saturday night. We have room to grow. Sunday mornings, you'll, you'll look around this service. You'll look around the next service. Yeah, there's the occasional dude spacer. We got to have those dude spacers. But we need to grow. We have a community that's lost. So many people that are hurt. So many churches that have shrank back. And so in Hebrews chapter 10 is the key verse for us really this year. And I I believe into this season, we look at the author of Hebrews. We don't know who the author was. We know he was encouraging persecuted Christians to hold their ground in faith. I go back to that verse of scripture and I'm just going to close this series down right back where I started. 
I do think life is full of uncertainties, full of twists and turns. The picture will come on the screen of the dragon, that road that's close to us here, 318 curves and 11 miles, and you look around and you're like, man, life is full of twists and turns, full of uncertainties. Why do so many people today seem to be having their hood up, their engine is overheated in their one and only life, they're stalled, they can't move, they're paralyzed, and you look around at our world and no wonder. I mean, even the news right now, last night I, uh, I was talking about the idea, this, this thing that's going on with Russia and Ukraine and just what next? The world that we live in and so many people are so like, wow, I can't seem to move forward. And I get that. If you don't know Jesus and you don't have an anchor in your fa- to your faith in Christ, I get that. But why are so many of us as Christians unable to seem to navigate life today. And the premise is negative, but it really is challenging. I think there's so many Christians today, especially today, that we live, the world we live in, that you believe that God exists. You affirm the work of Christ on the cross. You love everything about that, but yet we don't seem to allow Christ to navigate our lives in the here and now. We don't seem to trust God in the here and now. And so I, I don't know why But God directed me to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 through 39. I have just been like obsessed with this verse of scripture, reading a lot of commentary on it. Lots of people say lots of things, but really you read it and you got to read this on face value and you can kind of understand that even in our cut and paste society, when it comes to the Bible, you look at this and you go, there's really no other way to decipher this. Do not throw away your confidence the Bible says. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. As it was in the days of Noah, Jesus would say in the gospel, so it will be when the Son of Man returns. We live there today. The world mocks, makes fun of all that we stand on. But by But my righteous one will live by faith. I take no pleasure in one who shrinks back. We do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. I think of our Canadian brothers and sisters that we talked about last week. So many of you have reached out this week. What can we do? We're partnering with them any way that we can. We're still having talks. Anything that they need, we'll do. But right now, they're locking in with us because they feel like, Pastors and leaders and churches in Canada have shrank back. They are preaching things that they shouldn't be preaching. They need to be awakened to God's priorities. And with boldness, no matter the consequences, put our faith and our trust in Christ. I look at that verse of Scripture, and we're living that verse of Scripture out today. A lot of people shrinking back. A lot of people kind of buying into the culture and go, well, maybe the church should kind of pivot this direction, just be benevolent, just, just be this person, conform to the state, conform to the ways of the world. We do not belong to those who shrink back, but to those who have faith and are saved. Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is confidence. Boy, confidence has been shaken today in what we hope for, the assurance of what we do not see. Faith looks both backwards and forward. Faith, I've said it all along, and I just want to talk to you for a few minutes this morning about this. Faith is acting like God is telling the truth, and faith is more about your feet than your feelings. That's why revivals have died in America today, because it turned into a warm and gooey feeling. It turned into, hey, this is a great moment. Oh, I love this, especially for us as a church. We can gather together. uh, We can pack people in. You know we all can't get in the same room, and yet people are coming, and it was just packed. It was, was, I can't wait. Think of the unified service coming in two months where all of us get together under one roof. Those are moments that are so powerful, so amazing. And some people, you don't realize how much work it's ta- it'll, it'll take for us to have a unified service, the cost of the unified service. Do you realize that will cost us way north of fifty to $75,000 to have church for an hour and a half at the Sevierville Convention Center? 
You're like, Brent, is that worth it? Yes, 100%. Why? Because we come together as one church to rise up, celebrate the resurrection, and as a church, walk into the great unknown together. We need to be together in moments in time. But it has to continue to be a movement. we got to move. we got to put action to our faith. So what does faith do? We've looked at really four key biblical characters in this series for the last five weeks. We looked at Abel, Enoch, Abraham, and Noah. Abel, what does faith do? Abel really taught us that true faith looks for opportunities to worship. I'm going to say it again before we move on. We're getting ready to jump into the next series. Fight for it. Oh, I can't wait for that. I've already ordered my sumo wrestling suit. I can't wait. I'm wearing it every week, every time I preach. Can't do that. Sorry. But this last, this last week of this series, we got to look back at that. Do you wake up every day and go, I mean, I look for opportunities to worship. Or do we look for problems and things to complain about? Enoch demonstrated faith through action. The Bible says this about Enoch. Not a lot of words. I love it. It's amazing to me to think about Enoch's life described as a person who pleased God. Why did he please God? Because he walked with God. Faith is not about our feelings. It's measured by our feet. It's not measured by our talk, but our walk. It's not measured by our lip service, but our lifestyle. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says what? We as a church got to recommit our priorities to God's priorities. And whether we like it or not, we all want to walk by sight today. But the Bible simply says this. We live by faith. And it's kind of a no-brainer, not by sight. We live by faith. We all are going to live by faith. One way or the other, you are going to put your faith. I'm going to put my faith in something one way or the other. We all are going to live by faith. So now I'm going to kind of do an abrupt turn. It's going to be an interesting week before we close down. We have a few to be baptized in this service. We've been baptizing all week. I love it. Life change on display is the greatest, really one of the greatest things that we do in this church. I want to talk to you about something, and I, as your pastor, I need to, uh, to talk to you, all of us together, because we have a unique opportunity, and I think this is really powerful, and, and maybe God put all this together And I didn't really quite know exactly all the timelines, how this would work out. But yet maybe God put all this together to close this week, to move forward so we cannot just create a moment in this church, but a spark that keeps the fire going, a movement to revive, to awaken our priorities with God's priorities, to allow the community to see that we as a church are not shrinking back, but we are moving in faith together. And so if you call this church home and you've been around any length of time, things that I'm going to talk about today are not talked about lightly. What we say in this church, we have done. We have proven over and over through the 25-year history of this church that when we walk into big steps of faith, we're going to walk into it together. We're going to count the cost. We're going to be smart. And we've proven that. We're once again at another crossroads moment. Last year, at the beginning of 2021, I told you that the elders met together, and as we were navigating into an unknown future, some things began to be thought uh, thought about, prayed about, talked about that I never thought we would think about, pray about, or talk about. And that's for us to look for another piece of ground uh, close to where we are in a growing community to make sure that we secure the church's future growth. I would have never made that statement up until the COVID season, because I would have told you before that we would continue to move forward with multi-site. We would continue to go find places, spaces. You would get a kick out of how many emails we've gotten. Brent, when are you going to start Pathways Bristol? When are you going to start Pathways Now Canada? When are you going to start? And and that's what we would have probably said to do. But now in in a culture where we can see that a Vibrant, dynamic, local community church meeting day-to-day needs is needed more than ever before. And a vibrant online campus reaching so far and so wide as they get to lock in with us, all of us doing church together, is really the future. Not just for our church, but many 
churches that will get ahead of the curve and go, how do we effectively minister into the future? Here's how we do it. We 100% embrace in-person church. Church trends today, if you read a lot of church publications, it's dicey because a lot of people are saying, well, church in-person attendance is maybe a thing of the past. You have to embrace wholeheartedly the virtual movement. I can't do that. I like the whites of your eyes. I like to do life together with you. Somebody walked out of church Wednesday and asked me straight up, hey, pastor, would you like to do what, um, um, they said, Brother Dan. You always, if somebody says brother, you know they've been in church a while. Would you like to do what Brother Dan does, speak all over the United States, go in there with your, your best sermon of the month? Man, Robbie, they wouldn't know what to do with me. I'd go in there and we'd be blowing up the world. Would you like to do that? And I'm like, no, I believe Dan is completely called for what he's doing. It's unbelievably undeniable what he is doing and how he's making a difference. But for me, I'm called to be a local church pastor. I'm called to be a shepherd, and I love you. I like doing life together. I like to be here through the good, bad, and and indifferent. I like to be here with you. Hopefully you like to be here with me. But we like to do life together as a church. But you guys are the greatest ministers this church has got. you got to understand that you you and I are going to make a difference, but we're going to make it together, giving God the credit. So in 2021, we started to think about maybe changing our format, changing our direction, going to more of a vibrant, dynamic community church campus and a community that is growing in a a church that we do five identical options. We do church church. You all know it. We park all over the place. We have our buildings all over the place. What if we was to say, hey, God, well, let's just maybe think about what's next. And we begin to pray, and God opened the door, and I, I was blown away. December the 29th, 2021, just a, a little over less than two months ago, uh, to come on the screen, we did purchase. We as a church closed on almost 19 acres of ground on the old Birchfield Farm right across the street Next door to us will be the new Sevier County High School. The high school purchased the western half of that farm. We purchased the eastern half of that farm. It's going to be a great partnership, we believe, together. Why did we do that? Why did we purchase this ground to secure the church's potential growth into the future? If God says go, we now are able to go. Because as this community grows, and if we was to be locked here with the congestion of this one traffic light, with the parking and Dollywood using their facilities more, and we don't have enough parking to continue to do what we're doing and see growth and greater days ahead, we now have the potential to do that. We also have vision and visibility and accessibility to allow people to drive down Dolly Parton Parkway now and look at the future home sign and go, wait a minute, church, there's a church that's taking ground in the world? today, a church that seems to want to grow into the future? No way. And it's a key indicator. It's going to be a key moment as our community members drive down, even if they don't darken the door of the church to go, wait a minute, it seems like there is still a remnant of people that don't want to shrink back, but by faith move forward. We purchased that ground. We paid $3.1 million dollars. When I told you all that several months ago, I thought, oh boy, Jerry, here we go. I can't wait for people to say what they're going to say now. And I can't believe it. I've had literally, I, I, we've had more positive feedback, energy, like I can't believe it, how exciting, how awesome. Things like y'all stole that property. I'm like, don't say that out loud till we purchase the ground. Now you can say it. <laughs> all these things I heard, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, man, God, something, this is amazing. Have I had my share of hateful comments? Of course. Somebody told me this week in an email, Brent, you just care about ground and land and buildings. Okay. I do care about this, that we as a church do the best we can to reach as many people as we can while we can. I do care about that. And I believe that's God's priorities for the church. I do believe that if God wants us to, we'll we'll build a bigger ark. A bigger missile pad to fire missiles at Satan. Yes, that's what I do believe. I believe as a church, we need to walk by faith. We need to take ground that plants a seed into the next 25 years. I can go on if you want me to. But I do believe that what we are doing is right. We are going to be Noah. We're going to work and we're going to witness. We're going to work in the here and now. We're going to grow. 
When are we going to build a building? That's the famous question that people are asking. I do not know. Here's what I do know. We won't do anything until that ground is secured and paid for. 100%. Listen to me. We won't do anything until that ground is secured and paid for. We will work right here. We will make the ark as big as we can right here. And we will witness. Noah worked, built the ark, and witnessed a preacher of righteousness. We're going to continue to build God's kingdom one life at a time. Going to continue to make it the biggest difference we can. But, man, God can put some amazing new tools and weapons in our hands for accessibility and vision and visibility to reach a growing community, a community that's lost. While a lot of churches have shrank back and are like, we're just going to hang on in survival mode, we are going to continue to reach the lost. That is how we keep revival from being a moment to a movement. That's how we participate and not spectate. So in the seat pocket in front of you, online, you can grab a hold of this too. It's digitally on there, is a commitment card. We've done this from time to time. If you're new to the church, let me explain a couple of things. Number one, if you've been around this church long enough and you hear this this week, I can't believe it. Pastor Brent's talking about money in this world that we live in. You got to get my back, people that have been here. I don't talk about money nearly enough as I probably should. People are funny about money. I get that. And I'm not going to be the preacher who stands up here and begs people for money. I've never done that. But from time to time, I do believe God calls us to go to greater days. God calls us to do more above our tithes and offerings to reach the lost and to take a step of faith. Put some action to our faith and we get the unique opportunity to do that. So here's what we're going to do. Three months from really this week, Mother's Day week, we're going to come back and we're going to take an offering and also a time of commitment. I'm asking for two things. Uh, to bring the best offering that you can bring. I'm going to bring the best offering I can bring, Mother's Day week. Why Mother's Day week? We walked into this building on Mother's Day 2008, May the 11th, 2008. We went from the Civic Center where we, we rented for 10 years into this building, our first building ever owned with 185 people. God has seen some things happen in this church that we never would even imagine. Mother's Day week is a key week of faith for us to once again say, God, uh, we, knew, we know this, right? It'll come on the screen that the challenge of our unknown future has got to be more exciting than the stories of our accomplished past. God, we are trusting and believing by faith in greater days, even in days that we did not anticipate. So we come back. I want you to take this home with you. Put it somewhere visible. Pray about it. Plan. Why three months? If you're like me, I can't bring my best if I say, hey, you know what? Next week we're going to take an offering. I'm not prepared for that. I need to go home. Javon and I are praying for it. What can we do above our tithes? What, what can we commit? Can you commit $5 a week for one year, by the way? One year. And we're just going to continue to believe for it. And what we're going to do is we're going to pay for the ground. We're going to walk into the unknown future working and witnessing. We're going to keep doing what we do and minister day by day by day. But we're also going to have an eye on a, the future. So when God says, hey, you go. Build, build a greater missile to fire these missiles at Satan, this launching pad. Build a bigger ark to reach more people. Fine, we are prepared to do so. And I love it. I think it's the smartest thing that we have done as a church, and it's one of the bigger things that we have done. But I want us together to do it. You can look to the person to your left or right, and that's fine. You're like, Brandon, this church is big. I, I don't, I'm not going to do anything. That's all right. You, you can make that call. I'm not going to call you. You'll never hear a message from me on your phone. Why did you not give? I can't believe it. We're not going to have the Jerry Lewis telethon callers on the phone. Like, I can't, we're call, we're, we don't do that. We're just going to simply present the opportunity and for us as a church to make the biggest difference that we can. It's not equal giving. It's equal sacrifice. A lot of us can, can give more than others, but all of us together doing the best we can is when God gets the credit and we do the work. God is the resource. We are the conduits. I'm trusting God. I, we have done so many incredible things in the life of this church. I almost feel like, though, this is one of the most critical times to make a biggest statement as we possibly can to a community that we are growing and that we are believing that Lord willing and the creek don't rise and Jesus don't come back, God's going to find us faithful. So please take that home and at least prayerfully consider it. 
It's between you and God. We'll bring it back together. People have already asked, um, Brent, can we turn it in? I've been thinking about this. I knew you would be bringing this up when we oh, closed on the land. I thought it was great. You can turn it in anytime you want to. It's already on the kiosk, but we're going to tally all of this commitment time on Mother's Day week. Here's our goal. It's a big one. People have looked at me funny. Our goal is $750,000 above our tithes and offerings in this particular project. Project number one of paying for this ground. You're like, Brent, you're now smoking something funny. What is going on in this world that we live in? Listen, God's a resource. We're the conduits. I am trusting and believing that God will make a way. And God is already working. Don't worry about that number. Worry about what you can do. I'll worry about what I can do. We bring it back together and say, all right, God, we bring our best. You take care of the rest. Some of you are like, this is very strange to close a revival down this way, but it wasn't necessarily intended, but I believe God just worked out the timing beautifully. And I thought, this is the week to say, wait a minute, let's take revival from a moment to a movement. Let's put some action to our faith. Let's remember this, right? Change is inevitable, but progress is optional. Change is inevitable. Whether churches like it or not, we all like it or not, as Christians in, this, in the world that we live in, it's inevitable. It's, it's coming. The world is getting darker, as it was in the days of Noah. Progress, though, is optional, and we choose to walk by faith. We choose to walk by faith. I believe it. You won't want me to say it, but I'm going to say it because as long as I have breath in my and lungs in my breath or breath in my lungs, I'll say it, right? The best we have done is not the best we can do. The best is yet to come. Why would I say that? Because the world is getting darker. That's when the light of Jesus Christ shines brighter. Everybody with me? Are we in this together? All right. Oh. If there's one thing I would wish for you is I wish you could be in my shoes and in my mind and stand here as I speak this and feel when we talk about finances and giving. Last night, it cracked me up. Pastor Matt overheard it. He was telling me this morning, somebody in the, in the pew Saturday night goes, well, $750,000, well, that's nothing. And I'm like, I like that guy. <laughs> and he said something like, if 75 people would give $1,000, we got it. And somebody next to him said, Oh, no, no, if 750 people would give $1,000. He goes, well, we got a lot of people in this church. We're good. I like that guy. Listen, you can be a commentator. We can be hesitators. We can even be spectators. But we want to walk by faith and participate together. God gets the credit. We'll do the work. We got to keep working, church. We work and we witness. God, be with us today as we close this service with life change on display. Thank you for the men and women, teenagers, boys and girls that have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. Thank you for the many people this week that will be baptized the next go around that accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of their life. Thank you that we as a church can see that you are ruling and reigning and that you are with us and lives are being changed today. And boy, if we would just realign our priorities with your priorities, awaken, revive us, renew us to be a soul-saving station, to be an ark while the door is still open, inviting people and letting them know there's room at the foot of the cross for everyone who believes in their heart and confesses with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. God, the most important thing we thank you for today as we look for ways to worship you is we thank you for your amazing grace. How sweet it is. How sweet the sound. I'm grateful to have opportunities to walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you sing this with Scott?
How you doing? Man, I like that shirt right there. Summer road trip. Tell everybody who you are. Gracie. Gracie, you've accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. Let's talk about what baptism is and what it's not. It's not, uh, this is not something that saves you. There's nothing magic in this very warm, hot water this morning, but you're showing us all that Jesus Christ is your Lord. It's intimidating. Look around, look at the crowd. You're like, Brent, this is very intimidating. But listen, that's what it's all about. It's about you showing us all that what Jesus Christ has done in your heart, that you're not ashamed that he is your Lord and your Savior. So let this moment mark you. Let it, let it remember this moment. I was 15 when I was baptized. I remember the moment that my dad baptized me. But most importantly, I decided to take a stand and say, you know what? Jesus has saved me, and I'm going to show the world that I am a Christ follower. So it's our privilege, girl, to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One in here, one in here, two steps down, take a seat. All right, so girl, I'm gonna step aside, I'm gonna help, but I'm gonna let your dad do the talking. Okay, I'll go talk, right, I guess. I'll right. say this. It's a pretty awesome day. Um, 11 years ago today, I gave my life to Jesus. 11 years ago today. That was That's awesome. awesome. And a lot has happened since then. I have been baptized in this baptistry on a Wednesday night. I have baptized my brother. My sister is on our online campus watching. Uh, I got to baptize her as well. Um, God gets all the glory, Jesus gets all the credit, but the way that you presented the gospel to me and my family has changed the trajectory of our family. I will always be grateful for Jesus, number one, Amen. but for the way that God is using you and the way that God is using this church. And I will tell you, we are believing for it and we are fighting for it, regardless if it's across the street or right here, we are down with what God is gonna do um, in the next season of Pathways Church, 100%. Amen. So this comes to you. We are so proud of you. Say your name. Audrey. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked to you. You're young, and, 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 there's, and there's always questions when, when, when we're young. Pastor Pat, you've talked to Pastor Pat, and um, boy, we appreciate you so much as well. But Audrey, this is an opportunity for you. Pastor Brent said it in his sermon where he said that the world is getting darker, but when the world gets darker, the light of Jesus shines even brighter. You've already asked Jesus into your heart. That's been the transformation. Now you just get to publicly do it in front of all these amazing people. There's a lot of old people there, out there, a lot of old people, including your dad, that made some mistakes. Um, don't be like us, be like Jesus. So sweetie, it's my privilege and honor, it's our privilege and honor there, to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's go around one more time, Dave. Everybody, my chains, my, my chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, is ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Get ready to get into a new series called Fight For It. I am ready to fight for it, but you need to be ready to fight for it. We believe and trust God. Greater days are ahead. And all God's people said, it's been good to be in church on a Sunday, everybody.